Oh, I've had a right rock in there. I've had such a rock back there. Now, listen, you know, Tony Braxton, singer Tony Braxton, she's, around, she's staying around for a few days because she had a bit of a bust up with her old man, and I'm comforting her, right? <laughs> and she's, but she's come around now. I'll tell you what I've got. I've got a cup, right? My mum bought me. It's unique, right? It's the only one in the world that says, world's greatest son. Right? She had it made specially. And I'm in the, uh, she's in the kitchen washing up, trying to hear this big bang. And I've gone, well, what's happened? And she showed it me, right, in, in Smith. I've said, well, Tony, you'll have to unbreak my cup. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've put, what's that smell? What's the terrible smell in the kitchen? Well, you'll have to unburn the toast. <laughs> Completely useless. I'll have her out as it happens. And then, but then she'll probably threaten not to breathe and it'll be all trouble. Here, come see what I've got in here. I've done some, br I've done some brilliant shopping, right? Look at this, right? This, right, if you uh, have a problem with personal hygiene, anything like that, nothing to be embarrassed about, a lot of people do, right? When you've had a wash in the morning, right, just a little bit of that under your armpits. That's fantastic. Be careful, right? I had some Welsh people around, and they used that by mistake, right? <laughs> and their whole shoulder totally disappeared. <laughs> yeah, only Welsh, don't matter. Right? <laughs> and what else we got? Oh, all right, this is nice. You know, the, you, you ever watch Gladiators? You watch Gladiators on the telly? I suppose you do, don't you? Well, my mate out of Gladiator, Nightshade, right? Brought, uh, brought uh, the Nightshade range of personal hygiene, body... Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what it is, eau de toilette spray. <laughs> right, so uh, I've done the same now, yeah, look. That's coming out in the... Load of mills. <laughs> if you put that on, you smell like me, right? Just don't go near dogs. Fantastic. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, I'll tell you this other fantastic thing I've discovered. Just tonight, right, when I thought I'm going to come, all these people are going to be I felt a little bit nervous, a little bit unsure of myself, thinking, will they like me? Or, you know, will they think, oh, he's... A... And then I took two of these tablets here. That I feel fantastic now. <laughs> I feel absolutely top of the world. Oh, I've found another thing about me microwave. You know, I've got this fantastic microwave. You do all these amazing things. Read the instructions. Look at this. This is a brilliant thing you can do. You take these, right, look at these beautiful little robins. Look at these beautiful little robins. Now, before they all start complaining from the RSPB and all that and all the people who care about our feathered friends, oh, it was terrible, it was terrible that you killed those robins on your show, right? Don't be stupid, right? We never killed them, the cat killed them, right? <laughs> but what you do is you get some of them and you get this. I don't know what this is, right? So, uh, you know Tupac? He left it around my house. He was round here. He smoked a lot of them, right? They're just big. I think they must be herbal cigarettes. You take them, right, and you put them all together right away, right? Two, 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 five, five, seven, seven, nine. Start. Just wait a second. Ding! And you wind up with uh, some mellow birds. <laughs> Fantastic. Ah, you ain't got one of them, have you? Well, I got, oh, who's left this line around here? They, she, they, me cleaner, me Welsh lady who comes in and cleans, look, has left this line around here. Uh, I bought this, right? Uh, I won't tell you how much it costs, because you might be a bit embarrassed. Not expensive, not by my thing, but it's fantastic. It, it does, it's called an e-meter. It's a Mark, I think it's a Mark VI, but it's the new e-meter. It does everything. It just, I can't begin to explain what it does. It's just it's fantastic. It just makes you feel better. And you put these electrodes on your skull and you turn it on. It gives you a little, little buzz like that. It's fantastic. That's me, E-meter. Uh, and then she left this here for as well. This should be in my car. I sent her out to wash my car and she's left this here, right? This is my St. Christopher medal. <coughs> Here's the patron site of travellers. This is my lovely St. Christopher medal. I'll put that there and put it in my car later. This is a picture of me uh, when I met Gandhi. That's it. I went over to see him. <laughs> so I went over to see him because I said, here, Ben, because that's his real name. I, said, I went, here, Ben, uh, everything fine and all that, trying to bring peace to the earth, but you've got to get a square meal down your belly, son. You're wasting away to nothing. He didn't take any notes and look what happened to him. And, uh, oh, this is another book that I got, right? The Rights and Wrongs of Women. That's a good book. I thought I saw it, so I thought I'd be edited uh, Juliet Mitchell. The Rights and Wrongs of Women. So I read it. Uh, the first six pages there, that's the rights of women. <laughs> <laughs> right, as it happens, right, you're lucky to find me in, obviously, because normally, normally this time of night, I'd be uh, out and about. Obviously, uh, a lot of people love me, and they come up to me in this street, and they go, oh, brilliant, give us your autograph, and that. A lot of people who join this club, and I'll give them a T-shirt and pictures of me, and that. And when they die, right, instead of just burying them or burning them, right, what I do is I have them stuffed, 
and I put them in glass display cabinets in this place. <laughs> it's nice, you can go around and have a look at them. All my fans through the ages. <laughs> right, I must, I want to find somewhere safe to put my beautiful St. Christopher medal. I'll put it on the side, then on my way out, I'll uh, and put it back in the car. It hangs from the windscreen like that, and it keeps me safe when I'm on a journey. Um, I'll tell you what, I wanna, do you mind if I do something just, just before I start, just before we start the show, I just want to make sure that everyone is here. Okay, so first, uh, I want you to feel the seat beneath you. Would, would you do that? Just feel the seat beneath you. You got that? Okay, very good. Now, I want you to turn to one of your neighbours and say hello to him. Would you just... There you go. Okay, now I want you to look at a neighbour across the room and wave and say hello. Say hello say to him. Man. There you go. You got that? Okay, now, okay. are you here with me in my flat? Yes! There you go, that's fantastic. I just think that brings us closer together and gives us a, a more spiritual feel. That's all. It's just a... It's, you know, something that I've, I've been into lately. Right, TV programmes. What do I do, right? What do I do? I'll make the best TV programs in the world. Here's one that I made, I just want to show it to you. Uh, it's when I go out with uh, my friends in the, in the police force. Here's a man being caught with a prostitute. Clearly admitting, right at the very beginning, he's paid £10 for oral. <laughs> £10 for a woman to sit and talk to you. <laughs> but he's, he's so disarmingly honest, you can't help loving him. Can you picture up Main Street? Mm. Oh, it was £10 for oral, yeah? Have you been in troubles before? No. no. The only thing is, I feel sorry for them losses. Cause I, I mean, I've got... Uh, I wouldn't do them any harm. There's no doubt no. about that. I wouldn't do them any harm. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've ever... I've yeah. been caught doing this. <laughs> first time I've ever been caught doing it. <laughs> it's amazing, really, because I'm out most nights. <laughs> Not only are you nicking me, but I'm now rubbing in how useless you are at your job. <laughs> I'm out here, my, I often wave to you as I'm passing. <laughs> Got ten pound for Arlo. <laughs> All I'm doing is issuing a verbal warning. What you'll do about that is your business. You know what I mean? If you want to get the chance of getting caught again. So that's basically it. Thanks for being there. Uh, what about the tip? last the she wants to lift back or... No. <laughs> I don't mind giving her a lift back. <laughs> because I'm going back to the red light. No, you're not! <laughs> you give her a lift back. Uh, give her a lift back away from the area. Will she get into trouble? Yeah, she'll get into trouble when you come back tomorrow. <laughs> this is another police one, because they love me, the police. I'll tell you what it is, I'll be quite honest with you. They say to me, uh, Bob, will you come out and make one of your films? I th read between the lines, I think what they mean is, Bob, will you come out with us? Because we ain't going to get no trouble if we've got a hard man on the firm. <laughs> anyway, here they are. They're, uh, they're up in Sheffield, as I remember, uh, and they're policing. It's a football match. They're policing a football match, and they find someone up to something. Yeah, just hold on. We've got, we've got somebody urinating there. Go and get him. <laughs> so <it's> just <laughs> somebody urinating. All the students going, what's your name? Pissing. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Stand by also for some of the finest uh, camera work you'll ever see. <laughs> now, surely, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't bow down to authority. I don't kowtow to the man. All right, I know I'm all right, so I was, but surely... If you're being approached by two policemen, the first thing you do is put it away. <laughs> do you not think, oh, they can, oh, I better put it away. No, not him. He's like, what do you want? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm busy. <laughs> no, no, you can't. No, listen, you can't. We've got to verify your details. If not happy with your details, we'll have to arrest you. And I'm sure you don't want... Just one point, I, I remember thinking when I was making this programme, what they do now is they're taking his details and then he can go to football. My feeling was, he looks to me like he shouldn't be going to football to watch. He should be playing. So I don't know how, how old most of you people, to me, he looks like, as I was going, that's the archetypal footballer. He's got the footballer's hair that, uh, uh, you, probably none of you are old enough to remember, like Violet, uh, David Pegg, a young Dennis Law, a young Jimmy Greaves, all look like that. He looks to me like a footballer. I remember thinking at the time, I wonder why he never actually went into the professional game. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you want to see the, the match, don't you? Yeah, well, I said to him. Go on then, on your bike. Uh, you're now about to see why he never actually went into the, the professional football game. He 
because he runs like a tart. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry to have to say. So how much do you spend on him, boss? Seven million pounds. Seven million? Seen him play yet? Oh, I actually seen him, but I've heard good reports. What, we ain't seen him play? I don't need to see him. I can tell by looking. He looks the part, doesn't he, the boy? Hey, Ryan, go and join the other boys. Right, boss. Boys, I'm coming. <laughs> See, we've got a problem with a double medical uh, side to it. A, because it starts off here at a doctor's surgery. Somebody's uh, a little bit poorly. Now, there are two problems with the doctor's surgery. The first one, which you'll see in a moment, is that there's no access ramp for a wheelchair. But the second, and perhaps more important, you see, is this. Imagine an elderly person has come, or oh, a bit of a headache, a bit of angina, I don't know, a bit of, bit of trouble downstairs like the elderly people sometimes have. Now, comes around, just go and see the doctor. La di da di da di da. I'm off to see the doctor. The doctor will put me right. Everything's super bang. You see what's happened there? You see? What we have here is a classic no door wall scenario. You see? Should be door, no door, wall, bang, old person here. Now, then you've got the added problem. The old person's there now, completely unable to move. How do we get the old person up the stairs? Well, I think Ash and Charlie and the rest of the crew would have to pull in, a, pull in a helicopter, I think, and we'd have to fly her out. Always good television seeing the old person being flown out. Fantastic. And it all started, ironically, at a doctor's surgery. Fantastic. <laughs> all right, all right, never mind about that. Never mind about that. Welcome. Thank you very much. You join me once again in Hollywood Corner. Do, 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 do. This is where uh, all my friends from the world of show business, music, entertainment, the arts, uh, come and uh, send me their little things. This is beautiful. This is a thing of beauty. And it's functional. Look at that. Can you see that? This is uh, a beautiful little thing. And it's, uh, it's my first tooth. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? You get your first tooth and you keep it there. And there's a little angel there with gossamer wings. How beautiful. How beautiful. And it's actually sent to me by my friend Shane McGowan. Who uh, <laughs> sent me this, my first tooth. Uh, I want it, he said, I want you to have this for all the work you've done with me in the post. And there they are there. Look at that, Shane's first teeth. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> Absolutely lovely. So I'll keep that. That's the kind of thing I treasure, ladies and gentlemen. I treasure that kind of thing. And uh, just give me, can you give me half a second? I'm just going to have a little, just get my e-meter and give myself a little. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. <laughs> Here's the tape. I just found it. I wasn't going to play this, but I was rummaging around. Okay, I was rummaging around. Uh, I lost the keys to me jag, right? And I was rummaging around in the drawer. Couldn't find them, so I'd take the roller instead. But uh, <laughs> I found this tape, right? And this is uh, this is a girl who I was very, very fond of. I went out with her for quite a while, uh, but I had to finish with her in the end. I had to call her halt. I had to break it off. Uh, it's been a while now, and I'm recovering. And the reason being was quite simple. But when we went out with my mates and we went down the local pub and we went for a Chinese Indian, she was great. She was great. But I move in quite circles. No nose, no pack drill, but I'm like that with, with at least two of the royals, right? And I found that when we went to garden parties at Buckingham Palace, when we went to Henley Regatta, when we went to the opera, she, she would occasionally let me down. considered to be much maligned uh, in the press and in the media uh, over the last uh, um, couple of decades. But uh, I, and I have to say, I went in quite cynical. But then I saw the way that they conduct themselves and certainly the way that they bind together as a group. And I have to say, I was very, very impressed. And, uh, and I've begun to get very much into them myself. They're, they're the Scientologists. And this is, this is the program I made about them. Before we start the service, I just want to make sure that everyone is here. So first of all, I want you to feel the seat beneath you. <laughs> you got that? Very good. Okay. Now, I want you to turn to one of your neighbors and say hello to him. 
Hello. Hello. My name's Roger. I haven't got any friends. No, I found OK. Now, I want you to look at a neighbour across the room and wave and say hello to him. Mm. <laughs> you got that? OK. Are you here in the chapel at St. Hill? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And I think the world would be a better place if more people acted like that. I really do. So why don't you try it when you're going to work tomorrow? I want you to fill the seat with a... Get out, you big ponce! Uh, anyway, here, here they are, and here's all about them. Very good. Scientology began life as Dianetics, which was described by its inventor, Lafayette Ron Hubbard, as the modern science of mental health. Hubbard regarded his discoveries as so important. Hubbard? L. Ron Hubbard? Correct me if I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen, quite clearly, Mr. Donald Sindon. <laughs> he started the calendar all over again. To a Scientologist, this isn't the year 1981, but 31 A.D. A.D. meaning after Dianetics. Must be a terrible thing if you're a Scientologist every January the 1st. Oh, God, I've written 32 A.D. on the check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> Hubbard's work took on religious overtones when he claimed to have discovered evidence of past lives. A former science fiction writer, Hubbard also claimed to have visited heaven twice. On the second occasion, he reported, the place had become shabby. <laughs> Even the pillars of the gates of heaven were scruffy. So, the chances are that when you die, if you've led, led a good and fulfilled life, you go and live uh, on a housing estate in Rotherhithe. Just turn up to heaven and say, oh, hello, mm. <laughs> Oh, I don't think so, do you? <laughs> Uh, one of the great problems with Scientology is it's founded on a mistake, right? It's not L. Ron Hubbard's fault, right? L. Ron Hubbard had a, an idea, and it was simply this, right? That as man progressed, okay, as he went further up the, 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 the scale of, of, of enlightenment and intelligence, the danger was that he then became more open to the forces of evil, which are kind of very intellectual and, and conniving, and that there was a danger he would become a devil, a Satan, this is what he said to the person he was reporting. I think man could become a Satan. Unfortunately, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, I don't know if you know this, had a terrible list. Terrible, terrible list that he suffered with. Uh, and the whole thing just got completely misreported. On his travels, Hubbard developed the idea that human beings were, in fact, all-powerful entities called Thetans. No, you <laughs> <laughs> Here's where your problems have started to arise, basically. Scientology is packaged and sold like any commodity. We're here. All right. Hello. Good. Scientology books are extremely expensive. Would you like to see the registrar, please? Very good. What services are you here for? Well, Scientology courses can cost hundreds of pounds. To achieve. You see, so it's very expensive. This is the point I was making in this film. Thousands of pounds for the books, hundreds of pounds for the courses. And these aren't wealthy people. I mean, look, she's had to buy her clothes from the Oxfam shop. <laughs> and this poor man can't even afford a complete beard. <laughs> He's just had to spend half the money and get the little George Washington thing. <laughs> is it not Abraham Lincoln? That's who it is. Uh, so it's very expensive. The goal of being clear, or the higher levels of operating Thetan, can cost thousands. <laughs> the latest Mark VI E-meter, a spiritual aid which in itself <laughs> nothing, costs a remarkable £1,275. <laughs> Uh, it's nothing now, is it? <laughs> uh, sorry, I just, I just need to have another listen to the actual voiceover on that. Thousands. The latest Mark VI E-meter, a spiritual aid which in itself does nothing. A remarkable £1,275. <laughs> No chance of taking it back, I suppose, is it? <laughs> anyway, the question is, you can spend tens, hundreds of thousands of pounds, because this, I made this film about a few years ago, so you can double, you can treble that, right? What do you get for your money, all right? So well, what I did was I interviewed, uh, like, a spokesman. Two, two things you should, uh, if you're going to have a spokesman for an organisation, make him quite erudite, make him somebody who, who can make a point and then indeed reiterate that point, make him somebody who can speak clearly. But most of all, don't have a spokesman who doesn't have any idea at all what's going on. You have the ability to achieve uh, um, 
<laughs> the ability to achieve... Uh, <laughs> something to justify the huge outlay of cash. All sorts of... Uh, better states. I gave you £58,000. All sorts of better states. I'm sorry, I want something more specific than that. That being so, uh, yes, the Satan is capable of improving his lot. You can get on better with your wife. You can communicate better with your kids. You... I'm sorry, I could have spent the money on a fur coat and a big scale electrics and gone better with my wife and kids. I want something more specific that you're offering. And, excuse me, it better not have anything to do with Dalmatians either, because I hate them. And uh, be more aware of the universe around you and more considerate of the people around you. You can... Uh, learn to paint better, learn to drive a car better, um, and a uh, 101 other things. <laughs> Sorry, you've absolutely lost me there. All right, is, uh, I can't remember what else is on this. I remember making it. This young couple, window shopping in London, are from Norway. I remember them. I, I do remember them. I remember her. I remember their Norwegian. I remember that she used to be, I can't remember, I know her husband, what was his name? Uh, weird? Stra it's either Weird or Strange, his name, I can't... Uh. Rebecca Darman and her husband, Odd. That's right. <laughs> there you go, as it happens, I can't hang about, I've got to go because, here, I'll get me E-meter, Mark 6, don't forget, and uh, I'll just give myself a little shot. There you go. Now, I'm going to go now and be nicer to everybody and uh, do a bit of painting and fix me car. And if I, I'll find any Dalmatians, then I'll, um, I'll give them a little shot as well. <laughs> See you later. Cheers. He runs like a tart, but I'm reliably informed from the scouting reports he's a wizard with the ball. Give me... Right. Ryan, come on, son. Show us what you can do. Hold on a sec, coach. <laughs> <laughs> 